Today we're speaking with Dr. Kimberly Blackwell, Associate Professor of Medicine and Director of the Clinical Trials Program in Breast Cancer at Duke University Medical Center. Thank you very much for joining us sure. today. Can you start by uh, talking a little bit about this study and its methods? Sure. So this study was known as EGF-104-900. And th there's a lot of science that went into this. There were some preclinical models suggesting. So the, this, the study was actually a comparison of a small molecule inhibitor against EGFR and HER2, known as lapatinib. Its brand name's Tycurb. It's approved in combination with capecitabine, but not approved as a single agent for the treatment of HER2-positive metastatic breast cancer. So half of the women were randomized to receive lapatinib alone, and the other half of the women received a combination of lapatinib with our old friend trastuzumab, which is a humanized monoclonal antibody against the HER2 receptor. So this is a study that looked at single HER2 blockade in women faced with HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer compared to what we were referring, or what I refer to as the double whammy, the dual HER2 blockade. Mm -hmm. Now, the study um, d didn't involve chemotherapy, and the women were, for all practical purposes, very, very heavily pretreated. On average, they had received three lines of trastuzumab-based chemotherapy and six different regimens of chemotherapy prior to being randomized. The study was conducted in 88 centers in 13 countries, and it started in November 2005 and finished its accrual in November 2006. There were 298, I think, 96, 98 patients randomized, and the primary objective was really to look to see if the double whammy, dual HER2 blockade with lapatinib and trastuzumab would improve progression-free survival in this heavily pretreated refractory population of HER2-positive breast cancer. There were other endpoints, and the endpoint we're reporting on this study is the overall survival advantage of the double whammy dual HER2 blockade compared to single agent HER2 blockade with lapatinib. There was a lot of preclinical work that went into it, and as I'll mention on Saturday after the presentation, a lot of it was done by Neil Spector, a scientist at GSK. And what he showed was is that a monoclonal antibody approach and in, in combined with a small molecule inhibitor approach really delayed resistance, had increased effects intracellularly on MAP kinase signaling as well as increased apoptosis by downregulating a molecule called Survivin. So, you know, this was not just, hey, we have one drug and we have another drug, let's combine them and see what happens. There was actually, compared to many of the studies I've participated in, a very strong scientific rationale for combining these two drugs. And what we'll report, and, or what we've reported, or what we'll, re we'll report is really a survival benefit for the combination. And can you talk a little bit about your results? Sure. So um, the study was initially reported at ASCO 2008 by Joyce O'Shaughnessy. It's been accepted for publication in the JCO. And what we're really updating is at the time the study was initially presented, little less than half of the women had died of their metastatic breast cancer. The analysis I'm presenting is event-driven, and it was, meant to, it was planned to happen after three-quarters of the women had actually died of their metastatic breast cancer, remembering that these patients had, had really progressed through most um, commercially available options for them. This was kind of, at least in the, the 30 some odd patients I enrolled, this was one of their last options. So three quarters of the women had died, and what we found was is that if you got the dual HER2 blockade initially, there was a 4.5 month absolute improvement or uh, improvement in median overall survival. It's highly statistically significant and really shows the benefits of a one two punch against HER2 compared to using a single um, HER2 inhibitory agent like lapatinib. Can you um, tell us about the clinical implications? Sure. So I think the, the, um, the first conclusion really relates to the science, which is many of these women had survived metastatic breast cancer, HER2 metastatic breast cancer, for many years based on the benefits, the proven and the individual benefits of trastuzumab. So this was a patient population of really particularly HER2-driven metastatic breast cancers, and it showed that by continuing the trastuzumab, without chemotherapy and adding a small molecule inhibitor, you could prolong the lives of these women, which is an overall survival benefit is very rare in metastatic breast cancer. It ended up that 15 more out of 100 women were alive at a year 
because they received the dual HER2 blockade. So that's the first thing, is that this was a population of women that really at least informed me that HER2 was uh, the driving factor. And by offering them a better inhibitory combination, even without the chemotherapy, their lives were extended. I think the, the second um, implication really relates to the use of the combination in the treatment of early stage breast cancer. Mm -hmm. So we have two large studies, NeoAlto and Alto, both um, looking at the treatment of early stage breast cancer, one in the neoadjuvant setting, one in the adjuvant setting, that are looking at either trastuzumab alone in the setting of chemotherapy, lapatinib alone without any trastuzumab being given in early stage breast cancer, a sequential approach of trastuzumab followed by lapatinib, or the combination. And I'm hopeful, as we've seen in other studies, when you see an overall survival benefit, that this will translate to more women being cured of their, their breast cancer. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so those are the next steps in the study. Take a look at the earlier stage of breast cancer. Well, that study, the ALTO study, is almost done with its accrual. It's um, 6,800 patients of the 8,000 patients. And, and so I don't think they really needed this data from my study to support this idea of combining, as I mentioned earlier, this combination is well studied in preclinical models and suggests that there really is something to what you could call dual HER2 blockade or optimal HER2 blockade. I think the next steps are to finish those studies and see what they show. They'll be definitive in terms of early stage breast cancer. But I, I think there's also consideration, at least in my mind and perhaps other clinical trialists, of moving this combination earlier. Half of the women actually, the dual lapatinib mm -hmm. trastuzumab, half of the women 77 of 149 women actually crossed over from single agent lapatinib to the combination as part of the planned trial design. And so what we really want to see is what is the true survival benefit in perhaps a first-line population of mm -hmm. patients. If you look at some of the data um, and the, the numbers that crossed over, it really suggests that earlier incorporation of trastuzumab with lapatinib makes women live longer, and, and so we really want to get definitive first-line data also. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that I haven't asked you that you wish I had? Yeah, I, you know, I think that the questions remaining are, can you use this combination with chemotherapy? That study does not address it, or this study, mm -hmm. 104 900, that I'm presenting does not address it. But I think in particular it's important to think about this combination early. It's part of the NCCN guidelines. And it, it, we still um, don't have data. There's a, a poster at this meeting combining the dual HER2 blockade with paclitaxel. And I, I think a word of caution, which is you shouldn't just dump chemo onto the combination because if you have three treatments, you have three potential drugs that can cause adverse events. So that's one thing. It's just a word of caution about not just saying everyone needs dual HER2 blockade and dump some chemotherapy on in the metastatic setting. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing is, is I think the study really represents perhaps a tiny step forward to the day that I'm living for, which is the day that I don't have to give chemotherapy to patients, that I know what drives their tumor forward, and I can say, hey, this is what your tumor likes, what it doesn't like, and here's your cocktail of drugs. Um, hopefully, I'll see that before I retire, if not before I die. So I think the study really, it doesn't suggest that you, you can remove the chemo. What it says is that if you take two highly effective agents and give them to patients whose tumors are driven by the thing that the agents target, you really can make a difference in the treatment of breast cancer. Thank you very much for joining us. Sure, thanks for having me.